Okay, you guys, so I have a confession to make. Every Tuesday night, after a long, just grueling day in the courtroom, I would come home, I'd snuggle into my couch, I'd pop on Bravo TV, and I would enter into the world of one of the most celebrated fashion stylists, Rachel Zoe. I love, yes, I love <laughs> me some Rachel Zoe. She would just go and she would style these women and she looked so chic and so fashionable and she would just style the most elite of Hollywood celebs and I wanted her life. But, you know, even in my pretend life, if I pretended to be Rachel Zoe, I couldn't do it. Why? Because I was a full-time attorney. And not just any attorney, <laughs> I was a highly overachieving one. I took the Texas State Bar exam in February of 2008, passed that on the first go around, and that wasn't good enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Three years later, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take the California State Bar exam, and was working full time, passed that the first go around. <laughs> And then a month later, I flew to DC and I was sworn in before the United States Supreme Court. But with all of these law accolades, nothing could just you know, fuel my passion for fashion. So what was a fashionably obsessed attorney supposed to do? I mean, I have these visions, visions of walking around in Louboutin red bottoms and carrying around crocodile Birkin bags as people just kind of like, you know, watched me shaking the hands of Anna Wintour and sitting front row fabulously with my sunglasses at New York Fashion Week going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so what was I supposed to do with this? You know, we all have dreams. So I go home and same routine. I would work night after night, watch Rachel Zoe do her thing and oh, I just want to be Rachel. And I wanted to style these women. And so I started having these dreams. It started to enter my dreams. And I would see these women. It was very vivid until one day I said, you know what? I'm gonna do something with this. So I decided to start a side hustle and open a personal shopping business. But no one kind of tells you when you start a business that your clients don't just come running to you. <laughs> so it was really hard to try to figure out how to get clients, run a personal shopping business, and all the while be a full-time attorney. So in order to establish my expertise, I decided to start fashion blogging because if anything could happen, I could kind of fake like I knew what I was talking about because I could write about it on a blog, people would read it and think that I was the expert. So back in 2009 when fashion blogging started, or blogging for me, people were more so blogging like their personal dear diaries, like little Timmy went to poo poo, it was so cute. <laughs> or I like to make mac and cheese with this and you know this and that, and people would just read it. We were blogging about the things that really mattered to us. It wasn't a business and it wasn't about money. I was blogging about fashion and beauty and I was doing it for free. Little did I know that that one step of blogging would lead to me being on TV within two months of starting my blog as a fashion expert. It was horrible, I bombed it, I'll admit. <laughs> Going on radio, invites to both New York and Paris Fashion Weeks, interviews with the likes of Zach Posen, is me and, and me and Zach? Zach, he's so much fun. I'll tell you all about that later. Zach Posen and Nicole Miller, and the list goes on and on. And the most important thing that blogging did for me is that it opened a door. It allowed me to leave my life as a full-time attorney and enter into the life as a full-time fashionpreneur, what you see today. So life is great. I got addicted to blogging. I was blogging for everybody. CBS, Examiner, it was like this itch that I always had to satisfy. And slowly I started building this following of women who would come to me every single week to read, what does Leah have to say about fashion? What does Leah have to say about the new beauty products? It was really addicting. And then they sprung on us social media, which we know changes like every day. So Instagram, Snapchat, Vine, all of those players came along and now we've expanded beyond just writing to the blog to now we have to put our same voice into social media. And it was like the beast that you just had to feed all the time. But little did we know, I call us the OG of bloggers, we didn't know that it was gonna expand our audience and our followings to a rate that none of us could possibly have ever imagined. So at this point in time, people just started looking to us like, where should we be dining tonight? Leah, what should I be wearing? 
what should I do with beauty? What should I do that? Bloggers were now the voices that people looked to to change the world. Bloggers now, it was like the shift was going on in the atmosphere and we were all kind of coming together like this power of the bloggers, listen to us, we know what to do, we know what to say. It was really, really, really cool. And so the coolest thing happened in the advertisement world. They started to take notice of what all of us was doing in the digital platform. So I kind of imagine it like this. They all got together in a meeting and I don't know, it was kind of like this. They're like, hmm, if we can take all the money and we're spending a lot of money we could take that money that we're paying to be in print magazines and newspapers and commercials and give it to the bloggers because they can reach that audience directly and they're doing it every single day and they're doing it to an audience that follows them like crazy. Maybe we should start budgeting to pay for blog advertisements versus putting it in these other traditional media forms. And this is how the business of blogging was created. Bloggers now, had businesses. We now started earning the cha-ching, right? <laughs> so it was at this point in time that I started working with major brands. I started working with Vogue, Neiman Marcus, Cantu Beauty, you name it, the likes, and I was doing it in exchange for free products and money. It was absolutely insane. I remember it like it was yesterday. I got this box from Vogue and I opened it up and it was like really cute. You know the cute boxes you don't wanna open because they're really cutely you know, packaged. But anyways, so I open it up and I pull out this bag and it's like green. I would never wear you know, a really lime green bag, but it was a lime green bag. And it was like this crocodile kind of fabric. It was crazy. And the instructions just read, just carry this around. Carry it on your arm. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting this for free. <laughs> and this is like thousands of dollars and the only thing I have to do for this is carry it around town. Okay, I'm in, what else do you want me to do? <laughs> so I start carrying this bag around town and it's just blowing my mind that because I'm writing on a blog and I'm doing social media that people are just giving me free things of value. And so of course, you know, all us OG bloggers, we're walking around town with our new bags and you know, knew this, knew that and everybody started to take notice. And this is when there was just this big boom of blogs happening because now everybody wants a piece of the blogger pie. Everybody now wanted to make money in the way that we did. And it's crazy because to this day, I still have products delivered daily, boxes upon boxes. And I know my neighbors look like, what is that girl doing over in house, blah, blah, blah next door. We don't know if it's legal or not, but. <laughs> She has bags delivered on the daily, but no. Once this started happening, because you got to remember, we started just blogging about the things that meant the most to us. We didn't do it for money. So now, once social media came into play and we had to answer to advertisers and answer to brands, we had to question ourselves, you know, are we still going to keep a blog that is contained in seriously gravitating towards the things that we're passionate about? Or do we succumb to what the advertisers want and what the brands want? And now do we switch our blogs to where it's 90% 90, 90 paid for? This was a really, really tough decision to make because I like money and I like free products. <laughs> so that's, this is one of the things that we were, you know, we were thinking about. So fast forward around 2010, Instagram comes out. And by 2012, we've really figured out how to get this thing rocking and rolling, how to take cute pics, you know, the selfie thing, which I'm still not good at to this day. But anyways, we were being told that if we could grow our following to 5,000 or more, now remember this was 2012, that we would get even more money. So we're like, okay, we need a, a business focus. Let's try to figure out how to get more followers. And then Mashable did this recent study in 2016 that showed that for most bloggers, they're making for one post, one post, $110 to upwards of $10,000 for just one post. Now, if they focused hard enough and grew their followers to a million or more, then they can get to upwards of $25,000. See, that's where I was trying to go. <laughs> and then if you focused hard enough and you're like, you know, the likes of Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, which we can all aspire to be that, right? to millions and millions of followers, you can get $400,000 for just one post. It is just ridiculous. So you can imagine that how our business shifted, our strategy had to change. You had a lot of bloggers now running around and we don't really talk about how much money we make. 
and we really don't talk about what the brands are paying us. But we did know that word got around town just how lucrative this business could be, and now everybody was blogging, but they were only blogging for the money. So now fast forward, you have us OG bloggers, we're still old, you know, and we're like, okay, we don't know how to do this. We still wanna stay true to our audience, but we feel like we're selling out because now we're doing it only for the free products and we're doing it for the money. And in 2015, I had a choice to make. I was still attorney by day, fashionista by night. And I decided to just take the full step into entrepreneurship and I did it without you know, fully thinking it through, but I, I love fashion enough. And I decided to give up everything to pursue my dream. I'm wondering if my runway picture is. When it is, you'll love it. Um, but anyways, so my fifth year of being an attorney, I decided to take that leap and I gave up a lot. I was in the process of buying my dream home and I gave that up. I took the down payment and put it into my business. I also took all of my savings, every penny, and I put it into my blogging business and my media outlet. I even went a step further and drained my entire retirement account and <laughs> put that into my business because blogging costs a lot of money to do. And when you have mounds of student loan debt, I know y'all feel me out there, right? Yes. <laughs> and law student debt on top of that and bills upon bills upon bills and you have to make a decision on whether or not to do something for love or passion or do it for the money, it is not an easy decision. But I chose to stick with my passion and I prayed and I hoped that the money would come. So, but unfortunately for many other bloggers, money wins every single time. We now have an industry that is very corrupt. It's all about what they can push to their followers. If you see on people's feeds often, it seems like they're trying to sell you something every single second. No one is blogging from a true authentic space anymore. And it, it really, really just breaks my heart. I had, I know of bloggers, especially fashion bloggers, that have gone into debt to post designer clothing. Or they would go and borrow the clothes only to take it back the next day to appear as though they're living a certain lifestyle. Other blog bloggers, once they found out the numbers as far as how much money they could make from social media, they just went out and bought their followers. And the brands were paying them the money because they didn't realize that the followers were actually fake. I have a colleague in the industry. Her name is Christina Libby, and her company is called Soku. And they are a social media marketing agency. And she did a huge research project in Dallas a couple years ago, and I was a part of the project. And um, I had to spill all the beans, and I tried to do it anonymously, but that didn't work. So <laughs> she found out through this research study that bloggers were spending $20,000 just on website updates annually alone. She also found out that many fashion bloggers were paying $75 to $200 per hour just to take pictures with a photographer to post one to four times a day. So you do the math. If they're trying to keep up with Suzy Q over here, who's posting four to eight times a day, 75 to $200 an hour can really, really add up. Lastly, she found that a lot of bloggers have now started spending 20 to 80 hours a week just on content creation, creating videos, creating social media posts, just trying to keep up with this monster that has now been created. And it's all of the bloggers now that are trying to do it for a business and want to do it for passion, but they can't because they need to make money. They're trying to go into it full time. And so it's just a really corrupt in industry. So now, it's all about influencer marketing. And again, once again, what was very, we were very passionate about, it's just a money-making machine. I was on Twitter the other day, and a blogger out of Dallas had a post, and the post read, I love blogging, but hate that I can't always express my actual opinions on things. Truly annoying, and just broke my heart. But because I'm a little messy and I like good tea, I, kept, you know, I read through all the comments and replies. Hey, I mean, you guys know you do it too. And there was another blogger that responded back, because I'm trying to figure out who's out here, you know, just trying to sell stuff. And there was a blogger that said, you know what, I feel fake too. And that just really broke my heart because blogging at a point in time was just all about the things that mattered to you. It shouldn't be about the fact that you're pushing a product or a brand is paying you and you feel like you have to give it a good review. And this is where the industry had headed. A lot of bloggers now, because it's this beast, we have to keep up with this beast, we have to keep making money, they're now exper experiencing blogger burnout. A lot of bloggers and influencers now go through depression, they're exhausted 
because they're seeing the blogger to the left and the blogger to the right. They create this competition and they feel like they can't keep up. And I've had many of my colleagues that started with me about a decade ago, they've now quit. So my question today is, how was something that was so pure in the beginning, that was based off of passion, that woke us up out of our sleep every day? Like, how did we get here? How can we return the integrity back into the industry where we feel like we can create from a place of authenticity and not have to do it because we feel like it's gonna pay our next paycheck? And I have a couple of pointers to make to those, or do we have any bloggers out in the audience or influencers? Hey, I like you, you've been like nodding your head at me the whole time, make me feel good. <laughs> so I have some pointers for bloggers and then I have some pointers for brands who want to engage with bloggers to maybe we can make this industry one that's based off of authenticity. One, if you're a blogger, really take the time to sit down and find your voice. Know exactly what it is that you stand for and don't waver on it. Um, many businesses, when you go into a business, you have to do a business plan. You have to develop a business strategy. You have to know what those characteristics and attribute, attributes about you that make you unique. Every single last one of you out there, you have a very distinctive voice. There was things that were birthed inside of you through your DNA that only you can communicate to this world. If you do this through your blog and you find that voice and project that, you don't have to worry about money or followers or brands finding you. It will be so unique that people will follow you automatically. And I like to think of it like Dr. Seuss because whatever Dr. Seuss says is like gold, right? <laughs> so it's, today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. So if you start thinking that, you know, you start becoming social media famous and you start getting a lot of products, just go back to what Dr. Seuss says. Do it from a place of authenticity. Second, when it comes to content creation and you really dig deep and you get to know yourself and what makes you unique in this world, start developing content that is unique to you, the things that you're passionate about. Now, I know I look like I did my face today. I tried really, really hard for you guys, okay? <laughs> but I actually hate beauty stuff. Like, I don't like doing my makeup. I'm not gonna sit and contour five different ways. If I've eaten too much, I've just eaten too much and I'm not gonna try to look skinny for y'all. Well, kind of, <laughs> black on black on black, you know? <laughs> but if somebody gives me products like Becca Cosmetics did, I will take out a fuzzy rug and I will make it beautiful for my followers and tell them what to do with it, rather than me not staying true to myself and doing a step-by-step -step video, because I hate it, right? So that's what I would suggest doing for content creation. Do those things that naturally come to you. And lastly, bloggers, influencers, don't do it for the money. I found out in this business, look, I was making a lot of money as an attorney. I could travel every week. I could do whatever I wanted to do. But the moment I started focusing on what woke me up every single day, I started thinking about Rachel, started thinking about those women, started thinking about the things that drove me every single day. People can feel that. They could read it through my words. And the money came, the opportunities came, the resources came because they knew that Leah was operating from a very genuine and authentic place. And if you do that, I promise you, the money, the resources, and the opportunities will come. Now, as for brands that are looking to work with influencers, I need y'all to chill out. <laughs> you know, I really need you to look beyond followers. That doesn't mean anything anymore. Like what really defines influence? It shouldn't be because so-and-so has 100,000 followers. Because you know what? I look them up and they're all robots, right? So look, encourage your influencers to just create amazing content. Give them the freedom to play. When you do that, there's something very authentic in that process that people will gravitate towards. Lastly, with brands, build ongoing relationships. If I can work with a brand long time, I'm more apt to create amazing things for them rather than if they're just paying me off one by one by one. Your audience knows when you're trying to push something to them on Instagram or Facebook or through your blog every single day. But if there's one brand that you stick with, they'll start to believe you and they'll start to believe that you're not in it for their money. So, with all that to say, I don't know where this industry is headed, but I'll leave you with the words of John C. Maxwell who said, leadership is influence. As bloggers and as influencers, we're leaders. 
we have a lot of power. And with that power, it could either be abused or it can become corrupt. But if you do it in the right way, our creativity is endless. Everything that we're doing right now, our voices, they're changing the world. You know, as an attorney who dreamed of the runway to now one who actually walks the runway, it's very scary. <laughs> you know, I can say that true influence and true leadership really matters when it's done from the heart. So for the future, for all those bloggers and influencers out there that are social media hungry or they want to be celebrities or they only want to do it for the greed and the fame, they're going to die out. People are already seeing through all of that. For the ones who operate from their heart, from a genuine and authentic tone, you know your voice, you know who you are, you know what you bring to this world, those are going to be the bloggers who are going to survive. So in the end, operate from that place because only those influencers, only the authentic and the genuine authentic influencers in that manner are going to be the ones to survive. Let's bring it back, y'all. Bye.